Hello everyone and welcome to our episode of Showcase on Bloodborne. Another shorter video today as I'll be covering another firearm. This I already did the Hunter's Pistol, so let's go with the Hunter's Blunderbuss. As you can choose either or at the beginning of the game. A blunderbuss created by the workshop for the Hunter's line of work. Hunter's firearms are specifically crafted and employ quick silver bullets. Fused with the wielder's own blood, boasting damage against beasts. Which is besides the point in this game. <laughs> the impact of this highly efficient weapon counters beats swift movements and is widespread on the high nine ground guaranteed hit the mark. So it's just a really long-winded way of saying it's a shotgun. <laughs> but then again the shotgun was derived from the original blunderbuss back in that time. So visually, well, I believe I got a picture of a blunderbuss up here and yeah it looks close enough. The bore of the blunderbuss has to be incredibly large because they used to pack lots of black powder in there, and, and the blunderbuss in, in theory can shoot just about anything. Rocks, glass shards, quicksilver bits. <laughs> so yeah, so it's a very simple, simple rudimentary weapon. And this, uh, and this thing clearly finds that. The downside of a blunderbuss is, well, you think shotguns are inaccurate. Well, this thing couldn't hit the broadside of a barn at all. <laughs> yeah. And that will be correctly reflected in Bloodborne as well. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the stats. Now, going on to the stats for the Hunter's Blunderbuss, you'll see that the damage leaves a lot to be desired here. Yeah, that's some incredibly low damage. Yeah, 20 and a bonus of 7. Wow. Yeah. Now, even though this weapon is low damage, it's still effective. You'll understand later on. And I go around the special stats, you can see the durability is 150, which is plenty for a gun. And that was special there. For true bonuses, we only got a D for blood tinge, but with only 20 base damage to scale off of, you don't get a whole lot out of it. For true requirements, you need 7 strength, 9 skill, and 5 blood tinge. So, you barely need any blood tinge to get, well, use this, and even if you do, it's not going to exactly do a whole lot for you. So, yeah. Okay, I'll show you the special stats, which is besides the point, it's only the standard blood attack. Nothing else special about it. Now, there's no real animations per se, but the reason why I chose this enclosed environment, you'll see the spread accordingly. You can see, just a few meters, and that spread is huge. Like, huge. However, take a few meters longer, and you see, it doesn't really have any effect at all. Yeah. And when uh, the effect is only a meter in front of you, it's quite concentrated. So you get the idea. You can hit whole groups of this thing, but it won't be too terribly powerful because the damage fall off would be tremendous. And you can see it doesn't fire very quickly either. However, you can still fire it while rolling or backstepping. Any other way you try, even plunge attack, nothing. So move, moving on. Now, on to the upgrade section. Now, I argue that this weapon's not really worth upgrading at all. Even though you got blood tissue going to C, you see just then, what little point it's going to matter because it's the bonus damage scales off of the base damage, which is still low. I'd argue don't upgrade this weapon at all. You don't need to be upgraded. It doesn't need to be upgraded at all. Sure, you can, and it'll cause some more damage, but it's not going to be a significant amount. This weapon is best left unupgraded. The Hunter's Pistol can do a decent amount of damage. Especially if enemies are in critical health, you can finish them off. But the blunderbuss is not quite the same story, and I'll demonstrate that in the performance here. Now, for the performance for the blunderbuss, we all know that the firearms are designed for parrying. And uh, Hunter's Rifle does pretty good. The blunderbuss is a very, very good weapon for parrying. And for this entire Form section, I'll be using no weapons at all, or other than my bare fists, other than the, and the blunderbuss, of course. So you can see, even spread out across the damage across enemies, this thing does a very insignificant amount of damage. However, I don't have to even try to get tall fucking parries of this weapon. It's just that easy. I could be aiming at an entirely different opponents and parry another one just right, just feet in front of the other opponents. It is so easy to get parries with this weapon. Like, boom, boom, let's do it again, boom. Does, it, does this weapon make it look easy? Because, and for my skill level, it is. <laughs> it's like a joke. Like, in terms of parrying, 
it doesn't matter if it's level 1 or level 10. It's going to do the same amount. Like, boom. It's a joke in terms of pairing. This is why I think the blunderbuss is a better choice, perhaps. Where you might want to upgrade the pistol to the extra little bit of more damage. Blunderbuss, you don't need to. It does just fine. You don't need any real high scar well, skill requirements to use this. You only need the basics. When you're assigned the basic basics, this weapon's incredibly easy to use. Now, I demonstrated there that fall off damage is around five meters, and after that, you don't really use the weapon. <laughs> so yeah, fairly useful. Just careful how you use it though, and point blank, you can miss. Okay, but how's the blunderbuss used against armor? Well, if you watch Deadliest Warrior, the pirate versus the knight, you know it doesn't do anything. But the pirate couldn't parry the knight, could he? <laughs> At that point, it's irrelevant how much damage it does. What the damage actually can be done is your parry, which is the same damage regardless. Like, look at this. I'm doing this in one take. This isn't multiple takes, this is all one take. And it's easy. So easy. It's almost criminal how easy it is. Like, it like, takes a lot of the majority of the enemies and make, and makes them your bitch. <laughs> uh, even a Shadow of Yarnum, they don't stand a chance. Like, boom. And done. This makes for a poor, poor, poor action here. <laughs> Though I didn't, didn't really kill him there, but it doesn't matter. It has a wide enough spread you can hit him and fish him off. So yeah, the only downside is you're using up quite a bit of bullets doing this, but when you're facing more tougher opponents you're struggling with, parrying them is probably the better move once you learn how to parry properly. So you can just spam it. I'm just spamming it here. Like, I didn't mean, I'm barely attempting this. Look. Parried opponent that wasn't even targeting. <laughs> That's what makes this weapon excellent. It makes this weapon very cheap in PvP. Because no one likes the guy who just runs up to you and when you attack him, he just parries you. Like, god damn it. It happens though. Alright, let's go on to the pros and cons of the blunderbuss. On the pros, it is a very easy weapon to cause parries with. Like, very easily. It also has a very wide spread which you can have multiple points with that said cause the cause said parries. So yeah. And the barrier of entry for skill is very low and you can get it early in the game. It's okay. On the cons, its damage is incredibly mediocre. It's not really a weapon built for damage in its own right. Its damage fall off is very very short range, about a couple of meters. <laughs> so yeah. And there's really no point to upgrading this weapon. It really isn't. I can say I have a bit of a con since I can't really do a whole lot of damage. Alright, those are the pros and cons. Now, about the score. It's weapons like this that show my scoring rigid system that I introduced, which, a bit of trivia, I didn't actually want to do this scoring system. It was at the request of viewers back in the day. It's weapons like this that kind of throw a wrench in the machine. Because, you'll see. Damage, I'm going to give a 4 to 10. The damage really isn't there. The speed, I'm going to give a 5 out of 10. It's not horribly slow, but it's not really that fast compared to pistols. Bonus, 2 out of 10. We got no dam- we got little damage, and the bonus goes nowhere quick. Miscellaneous, I'm going to give a 9 out of 10. This weapon is one of the best weapons for Bloodborne. Ludwig's rifle is good and all, it's a shotgun, but farther range, but this one hits a wider, broader group right in front of you in that parry range. A weapon you don't need to upgrade, a weapon you get at the very beginning of the game. It is excellent. If you if you still struggle with a parry with a pistol, just take the blunderbuss. <laughs> It'll be easy enough. So as you see, in total, the blunderbuss gets 20 out of 40. You but I don't agree with the score, it's how my rigid system is. If you ask my personal opinion, it'd be around 32. But then where do those where do I extract those points? Mm. It's just sometimes my scoring system is rigid and not quite proper. But no matter, it's still a good weapon. Moving on. At this point, it's for fucking shits and giggles, but here it is with a gem inserted. And look at that! The bonus damage is higher than the base damage! Hooray! It still sucks in terms of damage, but here's a montage, what I could do with it, I guess. <laughs> Oh, 
that was a bad idea and it hurt terribly. So there you have it. A very useful shotgun. I won't say a very powerful shotgun, it is useful. Incredibly useful. If you want to get good, it's the first step. <laughs> and it might be your last step, depending on how you use the game. <laughs> but yes, it is not a very powerful weapon. But in, in hands of someone who knows how to use parries in Bloodborne, it is a weapon not to be taken lightly. It's incredibly powerful in that regard. And that's been Showcase Potato. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.